Okay, guys and gals, we just pulled into the farm where I've got about 23 snares for uh, canines, coyotes, and fox. And uh, I'm going to let you ride along in with me as we check. Beautiful day. It's like almost 40 degrees. It's 37 degrees down here. But it's almost like 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Yesterday we said eight more different snares. And nothing with that one. So we'll move on down here to the second old house, abandoned house, and uh, canines like to hang around these areas because I think uh, things like mice and rabbits like to hang there also. Alright, we have a snare up here on the right where yesterday we saw tracks in the snow of a coyote chasing a rabbit went through a little tunnel into this brush pile and uh, I went ahead and set a snare there in case that uh, it have a repeat occurrence tonight and they didn't but it's possible that this was uh, just a hunting excursion that it was on. Let me zoom up here a little bit. There it was in there. Going through that tunnel. You see that now? Okay. Up ahead here is the end of the Sendero, and if you look close, you see cornfield and the fence post. Well, we cut to the left and walk up along that fence row and the thicket, and I have two snares up that way. So we'll touch base with you as we get up there. Okay, folks, I guess uh, today is what you would call uh, getting skunked. 23 snares on a farm, and you have to remember we are on one farm. And uh, we have taken already, I think, six fox off of here. So we are limiting our um, catch numbers. A little bit here until dispersal takes place. Um, I'd like to talk just a hair about dispersal and what dispersal is, uh, and that that actually happens in all the animal species that we trap: uh, beaver, fox, coyote, uh, coons, and everything. And dispersal is nothing more than when. Um, a family unit is raised to a certain age. Sometimes it's a summer. Sometimes it's two years, like for beaver or whatever. But for canines, usually in the fall of their birth year, the parents kick them out to where they have to go find uh, an area that they can live in, that they can uh, make home. Because the food source is limited on any given food uh, or farm. So what a dispersal is, is just that. Um, when we take foxes out of an area, say like this farm, and we took six or eight foxes all, off of here this fall, uh, next year during the dispersal, foxes or coyotes from another area will be looking for a home area so what they'll do is they'll find that this is void so they'll take this up and then they'll start raising uh, little ones so you never trap out 
uh, a species. That's just my opinion. I mean, I, a lot of y'all may disagree with that, but over the years of me trapping, we've gone back from farm to farm to farm to farm for 20 years and caught uh, 20 plus foxes off of that. I mean, we would start in, in November, the first part of November, and we would trap for two weeks uh, up until the deer gun season, then we would pull, okay, and we would end up catching four to five hundred foxes in those two weeks in, in the area that we trapped. Now, we didn't trap one farm, of course. Uh, we had like 30 to 40 farms uh, that we trapped in a 150 to 200 mile radius. So, we're spreading it out and getting different family units of canines. So, I've had folks comment that uh, when I mentioned in one of my videos of uh, the fox numbers dwindling down, uh, I've had people comment, no wonder, look at your catches. And we would you know, show the pictures of large catch numbers. But that had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with the dwindling numbers of the red foxes. And I know this because Maryland, Virginia, and Ohio, and neighboring states, all the, the red foxes have dwindled because of one thing, the coyote. When a coyote comes in, a red fox will leave or get killed. And he'll have to maybe um, sucker up to a, a development or something. And a lot of times you'll, you'll start seeing red foxes close to developments. Why is that? Because the coyotes are shyer and they're not going to uh, uh, hunker up to a development as readily as a red fox would. So when I say that the red fox numbers are dwindling, I, I mean that and it's only because of the coyote. Um, the gray fox uh, can get away from a coyote more readily than a, a red fox can. They can actually climb a tree if they need to, uh, where a red fox can't. If he gets out in an open field, and I've noticed this myself, I've actually seen foxes, when I'd be in a deer stand, I've seen foxes come out to the edge of a field, stop, they'd come out of the woods, they'd stop, they'd look around for several minutes, and end up, um, when they would start moving, it would be on a robust pace to get across that open field because, in my view, they didn't want a coyote to see them and come after them. So that open field, uh, they bust across it. And we know that that's where you catch most of your red fox anyway, is in the uh, field edges and somewhat. Okay, so I've rambled on enough here this morning. I'm going to go ahead and um, shut this off and get back to the house and start skinning. <laughs> I guess I'll have a quick skin today. Nothing to skin. I've got three more snares back at the house. I've got to check um, down my house there. We've got some coyotes and foxes that have been visiting every now and then down at my bottom. So I've got three snares down there. I'll check in... Uh, if we get anything down in that way, I'll go ahead and give you um, a holler and, and put them on the today's catch uh, video. So y'all have a great day. This is JW with Stevens Family Outdoors uh, speaking at you. God bless and be safe today. Music.